Happy Friday! Hi everybody! Happy holidays! We <laughs> are craving Thanksgiving now. <laughs> We're getting closer to I Thanksgiving. I wish it was today now. I'm like, know, gosh, I'm I like, know. this is all smelling and sounding so good <laughs> i know because we're going to show you how to do a turkey i wish we were showing it next week but you wanted to show it today well we need to show it because you guys have to prepare right and I know. she needs to know that on instagram lots of people are already showing the i know and it's a good time to go and buy your turkey because we were just at the store this week and it's a great time to go get a fresh turkey or a frozen turkey um, you take it, it takes like four days to unthaw a frozen turkey. So go to the store. Unthaw it now. Take it out oh, yeah. now. Put it in your refrigerator now. Don't yeah. keep it in the, re you know, start bringing those frozen turkeys out of your refrigerator, out of your freezers, putting them into your refrigerator. It takes three to four days to unthaw a turkey in the refrigerator or buy one fresh. The fresh are actually on sale for a good price. Um, so either way, whatever way you want to go, I don't love a fresh or a frozen. They're both great. Yeah. So we've done both throughout the years and they turn out about the same. Okay. So we, 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 t we hit a little bit about last year and a lot of you want to know a little bit more about that. So when we started the Instagram a year ago, it was last October, my mom came out for Thanksgiving and we prepared our whole Thanksgiving dinner. How many days before? Two? Like two to three. Two to three days before Thanksgiving last year. And we died over it because everything I'm not was kidding. Done. Everything was done. <clears throat> I felt like then we got to sit at the table, relax, oh. and enjoy the food. There was no crazy cleanup. It was just like what we had just eaten on. And it tasted fresh and good. It was so Which, good. We had a couple of fridge. You had a fridge in your garage. And then we had yeah. a fridge in the house. And so we put everything into the fridge. And we were just able to take it out the day of at, and let it come to room temperature and then bake it off. It was amazing. It was amazing. So if you do want to do that, yes, obviously making it the day of is the best, but you guys, it really did turn out and we loved our Thanksgiving last oh, year. It was. So the stuffing that we show you today, we're actually going to be eating that next week. Yeah. And so tell them what we're going to be okay. doing. They want to know exactly how we do it and how we would Okay. I thought and all that. So the traditional bread stuffing, we do two stuffings every single year. We do the traditional bread stuffing and we do the cornbread um, stuffing. So we love them both and that's why we do them both. Now today we're going to show you the traditional bread stuffing. We're going to make it and then we'll end up freezing this. And then we'll put it in the freezer, we'll get it out a day ahead, we'll bring it to room temperature, and we'll bake it off. Yeah. The cornbread stuffing that we're showing you, we're going to actually stuff the bird, and we're going to bake it. And later on today, we'll come back, and we'll probably show... It. We'll have to show the turkey in stories. Yeah. <laughs> well, so we'll show the turkey finished in stories. Now that, we're going to probably eat, because we're, you know, we're almost a... We're just six days away from Thanksgiving. So that's just gonna be for you. So we'll be eating that. So you wouldn't take the cornbread out and freeze it? After we stuff it? Yeah. No! <laughs> that's funny. Well, I'm sure that's no. a question. I know, I'm sure it is too. But no. fine, I'll eat it twice. I'm excited yeah. about yeah. that. Yeah, so we'll eat that <laughs> twice. We just wanted you to the get the- The cornbread stuffing is my favorite, my favorite, but I love bowl stuffing, oh. especially now with the Kamu bread. Oh. It's dreamy. It's dreamy. Okay. So, okay, so let's get started. We want to go really quick. Um, we want to show you these recipes as fast as we can. So the traditional bread stuffing. So what you do is three days in advance or so, you take a loaf of bread. Now, um, do we just do one, um, sir, well, the one recipe of this? No, we're doing two and three times that. Uh, maybe someone else will bring the traditional bread stuffing, maybe a couple of people bring it, maybe I'll decide to make it all for that year and sign out the other side, uh, sign out the other sides. But this is one recipe, just like in the book, on book one, Lizzie, go ahead and hold that. Okay. In book one on page 214 and 215, these are the stuffings that we are making today for you. So we're gonna show you how easy it is. 214 and 215 in the first book, okay? So, first of all, we need a loaf of bread. Of course, we're using our Kamu bread and we do make our, our 
uh, Camu bread, mostly in de minis. So one loaf would be considered three minis. Okay. Okay. So what we do is we just tear the bread up. So we, this is three minis. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Or one loaf of bread, one okay. loaf of Camu bread, okay. normal loaf. Okay. Okay. We just tear the bread up hopefully three days in advance to dry it out. Just keep it out on your counter in your kitchen. Cover it with paper towels. That's it. Just keep it covered with paper towels like this. And then every once in a while, go over to it and stir it. So the bread gets dried out, okay? If, you, if you're like, oh my goodness, I forgot. I didn't have three days in advance. Go ahead and just do it <laughs> the same day. But it's best if the bread is dried out. And of course, you can buy the bread, yes. But again, we're, we want to have our kamu bread in our stuffing because it's so delicious and so good for And us. homemade bread is way better than store-bought. So, yes. of course. So, this is our bread, so it's ready to go. So, we're going to put it in our large bowl right here. And we're going to, we've already... Um, all of this? Yes. So, we're going to put all of this in the bowl, just like that, okay? Okay. And so now we'll add a teaspoon of ground sage. Lizzie, go ahead and add a teaspoon of ground sage to that and a half a teaspoon of coarse salt. Okay, that's good. And a half a teaspoon of coarse salt. Half. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, that's okay. <laughs> okay. Then, I took a little out. I like extra salt. <laughs> then we're going to add sorry. some ground black pepper, about a fourth of a teaspoon or to your liking. Okay. Okay, just yeah. like that. Okay. All right. And then we're going to take a third of a cup of butter, a small onion, and three fourths cup of diced celery. And we're going to cook it down, which we already Can have. I show this. Okay. We've already cooked this down, and all the vegetables are tender in there with the third of a cup of butter. And so now we're going to add it to our stuffing. Just mix that around. It smells so good. Oh, oh. There's, celery is the best um, little condiment to go with our dressings. We put them in both. Okay, so that we're adding. Now um, we're going to pour the mixture over the bread, and then we're going to stir in the beaten egg, okay, which we have right here. We have an egg. We're going to be... Which cookbook is this in? This is in book one. We're on going, page 214. Yeah, 214. It's we're, under everyday sites. Okay, we're stirring in the egg, and now we're going to add just enough chicken broth to hold everything together. So I have chicken broth prepared right here, and um, it actually says about a cup. And so we'll just see. This is two cups of chicken broth right now. We're just trying to hold everything together. And then we want to remember that if we're putting it in a bird, it will remain um, moist. But if we're not stuffing the bird with this, then add more liquid. We want to add a little more liquid so it will be nice and moist. Um, so that's what we're going to do with this one. We're going to actually put it in one of these um, pie plates pans like this. This is a large one. This is like the perfect size for this. Now, to keep this it's moist... horrible for a pie, though. You should have saw what she did when I accidentally bought this size. Because it's so big. Well, I didn't mean to, but oh, man, I got it. I got it from her. It's, it's so funny. But now it's the perfect size, so good thing for I did buy it. Exactly. Man. It's perfect. Is it cold or warm broth? Okay, um, the broth can be cold or warm, either. Just, you just... Either one, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's keep going because we want it to well, be we want it to be good and moist because this, this one we're going to actually freeze first. Okay, but do we're you gonna, spray it? We're gonna put it in here. We'll spray it, um, and then we'll put it in, and then we're going to dot it with butter. But now to keep, if you want the if you want this dressing super moist and you don't want it to get brown at all on the bottom, then you would place this in another pan with water as you bake it, and the recipe tells you that. So if you would like to do that, you can. So how are we doing on it's moistness? It's good. It's good. Yeah. I think I... just a hair more and we're good. Mm. Don't you? What do you think? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me spray this. Okay. Now. I think it's looking this, good. This is your um, 
this is a, basically a typical traditional bread stuffing, a very typical. Now, what you can do to fancy this up is add sausage to it. You can add cranberries to it, which is one of my most favorites Yum. in the whole world. Yeah. You can add nuts to it. Um, there's different variations that I talk about in the book, and many people that I know that make this definitely add sausage yeah. because then it's sausage stuffing. So many people have that tradition, okay? But we're just showing you the plain. Now, we'll dot it with a little bit of butter. Okay. Go ahead and get some butter on top. Look how easy it is, is to make your homemade, homemade it's stuffing. It's so good. But the Camus so bread delicious. is what makes it. How much? Yes, how just much? dot, you know, just dot around the top, just like that with some butter. And then we'll put... I need uh, the other knife. Yeah. Right now, we'll put saran wrap on top and then cover it with tin foil and we'll freeze it. Then we'll get it out the day of or maybe the day before, put it in, move it to the refrigerator, um, you know, let it come to room temperature before we actually put it into the oven. Okay? And then just bake as directed right in the recipe. Is that good? Or do you so want more? it's perfect. It's perfect. This is homemade stuffing. It's so good. Mm, okay. It's so good. My okay. mother in law adds oysters, but I'm not a fan. She makes it plain. Oh, well. yum. Okay, so now we need some saran wrap and okay. our tin foil. And so this will go directly into the freezer. So yes, you can prepare. You can even Hi, pre Ashton. yes, you can even prepare your mashed potatoes ahead of time and freeze them. You can, and we have done it. So all you do that when you really are freezing food is you let it come out to room temperature, and then you bake as normal. Yes. It's not the best when you try to bake it frozen. So just let it come to room temperature. It's so easy. Okay, this is ready for the freezer. And if you were making, say you were doubling or tripling this recipe, I know so many of you love the sausage in it. So go ahead and add the sausage. Sorry. It tells you exactly how much. Well, for the whole berry cranberry sauce or the dried cranberries, it's a half to three-fourths cup. And then I say eight ounces of fully cooked sausage that you would be adding to this. So, so many people love to do that. Say you're doubling it even. So you have two of these. You're done. Your dressing's done if you're not stuffing your bird. So perfect. We're we're good to go now with that. So I'll now put it in the freezer right now. Now what we're going to do Actually, is Actually no. <laughs> There's too much in there. Well, wait okay. a minute. Here's the cornbread. Okay, so now we're going to do the cornbread, Lizzie. So what we've done is we've gone to page 241 in book one. Okay, again, book one. What kind of sausage? She has a specific brand. Colossimo's. Yes, I love the Colossimo's um, sage. Or Jimmy Dean. Actually, for this, I would go for Jimmy Dean sage. That's what I would go for, for it to put in this. Okay. Um, okay, so. How many would that size feed? Um, 12, because there's so much food. There's so much food. Okay, so on 241, we have our buttermilk cornbread or our northern style cornbread. Both of these will melt in your mouth like you have never had The northern in your is mouth. my absolute favorite. It's like <laughs> eating cake. Oh, if you've never had it, it calls for the white cornmeal. Oh my heavens, it's the greatest, it is greatest like cake. cornbread in the world. But the buttermilk southern one is fabulous too. It is. It's made with it buttermilk. I actually um, made this in my. Um, cast iron skillet, yeah. which I love to do. You don't have to. You can make it in an 8x8 eight eight or a 9x13. But anyway, so we go to 241, and we're making the buttermilk cornbread for this dressing. Okay? This dressing, the one that we just showed you was my mother's dressing and my grandmother's dressing. Um, and then... My dressing, because I had to put it down on paper. They never had to put it down on paper. And can you believe a Fanny came yesterday and lived by her mom? Oh, my goodness. That that's was right. crazy yesterday. That's right. That, that was, was so insane. Fun. So the, the traditional bread stuffing is my mother's and my grandmother's, but they never had a recipe. So I had to come up with a recipe. Now, this recipe for the cornbread, we lived in the South. We lived in Atlanta, Georgia. We um, lived in Texas three times. And so a darling, darling girl 
Julie down in the South taught me this. Now again, she had no recipe. So this is my version of cornbread dressing because she just does this, just like so many cooks do in the South, especially, and like my mom and my grandmas. So it was difficult for me to get so many of these recipes down because I had to work hard at figuring out how they would taste for all of you and all of us and my children. So for the cornbread dressing, we make one recipe of our buttermilk cornbread and make that in advance as well so that you can do the very same thing, it dries out, and then you toast two pieces of bread. So yes, I'm toasting our kamut bread and you just crumble the cornbread after it's cool and put it into a bowl and then crumble two pieces of toast, okay? That's how we start the cornbread dressing. It is so delicious. It is, it's amazing. It is so delicious. Okay, now we've added our, now we add our three rips of celery and our two small um, yellow onions and two cups of chicken broth, which is already done. So Lizzie, go ahead and add that and okay. stir that all up. That has been cooked. So we cooked our two cups chicken broth, our celery and our onion all together until soft. And about 15 minutes, and it tells you that in the recipe. Then we're mixing all of that up. Um, we've already put a little bit of salt in and we'll add a little more salt now. And now we're going to add one and a half teaspoons of fresh sage or dried so one show half how you teaspoon. Did this. So this is our, these are some of our, um, this is thyme and rosemary. These are the, the main herbs that we're gonna be using for Thanksgiving. Here's our fresh sage, which makes all the difference in the world if you can get it. Um, so it's actually one and a half teaspoons of fresh sage or a half a can teaspoon. Can you use um, shallots instead of onions? Of course, yes. Of course, you can always use shallots in place of onions. Okay, we also in the last recipe used our rubbed sage. It didn't call for fresh, but of course you can always use fresh. Um, use a little more of fresh and less of dried. Okay, so now we're gonna add some more black pepper. Already added, a, we added a little bit of salt when we, um, when we boiled the, the chicken broth and the celery and the onion together, we added a little bit more just now, and now we're adding our pepper, okay? And now we're going to add two eggs. Oh yeah, I just want Two eggs it. this time instead of one, okay? So two beaten eggs this time instead of one. What is the best just, way to dry out your cornbread if you live in a humid climate? I live in Florida. Just just let it sit out on your counter. That's all you can do. Or put it in a 170 degree oven, actually, and, you know, not covered, and just let it dry out in there for, you know, a few hours. And then take it out on your counter and that'll give it a good start. So now we've added our two beaten eggs and we're going to add a teaspoon of chicken bouillon. So right here, that just ups the flavor a little bit of the chicken bouillon granules. And so now all we need to do at this point is to see if we need to add any more of the um, actual chicken bouillon, which I think we do because we like it more moist. Now we're going to be stuffing the turkey. When Julie first showed me this, I was just standing there like this with my, I was just amazed because she hers is like soup. It's like pouring soup into a thick soup into the turkey. It was, and then she poured it all over the top on the sides after she got the cavity filled, and then she poured it on the sides. But it it turned out so amazing. Mine isn't quite as soupy. I think you've got to see that done in order to believe <laughs> that it would be good. But hers. Hers what was brand of chicken broth do you soupy. use? So we can use any any brand, Trader Joe's. I've um, been loving the chicken bouillon thing. The chicken at, bouillon from Costco is, is the main one that we use, and I'm just trying. It's this one. This is the main one that we're using. That is amazing. Actually, it's amazing. Yeah, 
we, you know, sometimes we buy it so it's super uh -huh. easy to get. Yeah. Oftentimes if I'm um, boiling a chicken, I will save the broth. And then again, I put that right into the freezer and Ziploc baggies so that when I need it for something like this, I just get it out, put it in the microwave, defrost it, or leave it out on the counter. Okay, so we want just a little bit more because this is meant to be a little more soggy. And it's just the way it is. That's the way they do it in the South. Okay, so this is done. Now we're gonna show okay. you how to stuff the turkey. Okay. Okay, so. Um, I'm just letting you take this. There's a couple of different, there's a couple of different turkeys recipes in our books. We have in book one, Lizzie, would you find it on, it's on Sunday night, the turkey, and then we'll show them how we give our Thanksgiving, all of our recipes there. There's a turkey in book one, and then in book two, I show you how to do delicious moist turkey every time. And I'm not kidding you, this is foolproof. Um, Lizzie, show, this, the, roast show the roast turkey and stuffing in book one if you want to do the more traditional way. That's on 178, like when we told you our sides, it already tells you all of that. Yeah, and if you want to choose to do the more traditional way, just look on page 171 in book yeah. one. Yeah. But this way is also very traditional for us because we've been doing it for years now. Um, but it's kind of it's kind of funny. It's it's fun. It it will make your turkey moist every time. Lizzie, that's about to fall off. Um, so let's look, let's look at the recipe. So you need about a 16 pound turkey. So this one, um, you just take it out of the bag and wash it, put it in your sink and carefully wash it. Take everything out of the middle, um, which is the neck. And then you go around to the back for those who haven't done it before and you take out all the giblets and let me show you what they look like in case you don't know. So the neck, you know what a neck looks like and there's a bag full of giblets that are in the back side that you remove, okay? So once all those, would, would you hand me some more paper? No, this is good. So once you remove all those and you've washed your turkey with cold water in the sink and make sure you have a cookie a sheet, a baking sheet with paper towels waiting for you to take it out of the sink, to put it directly onto the paper towels that will soak up any more of the water and not spread any of these turkey, these poultry germs. You've got to contain your poultry germs. Um, I know someone um, who got sick um, trying to prepare a turkey because she was not washing her hands. Yeah, you gotta be careful. And she was going from, you know, recipe to recipe or whatever, not realizing you have to wash your hands super well when you're working with any kind of poultry, okay? So we want to contain these germs to this baking sheet. So we've got the turkey all washed. We've taken everything out of the cavity and the back. And so, um, it's dried because we've dried it off super well and we'll dry it a little bit more inside now before we add the stuffing. Now, at this point, if you were not adding stuffing, I would definitely add some herbs just like we just showed you. I would add a lemon for sure, um, some salt and pepper. And that's what I would put inside if you are not going to stuff it. But don't be afraid to stuff a turkey because it's, there's nothing to be afraid of. You're not going to get sick. So many people think that you're going to get sick. I'm going to wash my hands with soap and water over here because I want, I want to be here. super clean because I have to show you something that we're almost ready for. Okay. Um, so our turkey is ready. So now we're going to take some cheesecloth. And I wanted to show you the different kinds. You can buy cheesecloth at World Market. You can get it at Harmon's, I've seen it. You can get it at most all the cooking stores. It's not expensive. So we take cheesecloth that looks like this and it's doubled. And the recipe will tell you to use the double thickness. And then we're just going to measure our turkey. This is a 12 pound turkey, it's, it's small. Because 
we're just going to eat it <laughs> yeah, yeah. today <laughs> because it's too far away from Thanksgiving to save. So um, last year we actually just put them in, in the fridge and then warmed them, cut them up. Yeah. And they, they worked perfect and took the stuffing out, put them in bowls, and then cut the turkey up and then just reheated it. Okay, and reheated the stuffing. So we'll just see how big we need, and it looks like about that long. So we'll just cut the, the cloth like that. Now, before we do, we're going to salt and pepper our turkey and spread it with fresh sage, okay? Are you using a turkey with a pop thermometer? Yes, I am. Do you recommend a certain brand? Um, no. No, I can't really recommend a certain brand. We just, I through the years, I've just used, just used so many. When you reheat the turkey, did it stay moist? Yes, remember? Yeah, it was really yummy. Oh, it was so moist. I'm just letting her take this away because I, she's the pro with the turkey. But you're, but Lizzie, you're in charge of the turkey this year. So you're, you're doing this. So go ahead and add some more no, of that to the top. No, you're, you're... I'm just like, I can do the sides and dessert. That's my thing. Yeah, but you're doing the turkey this year. Now, Lizzie, go ahead and get um, the sage. And let's just sprinkle it on yes. top. Yeah, the fresh. Just kind of right. Yeah, just like that. Okay. Perfect. I've okay. never done the turkey by now, myself. Now what we're going to do, Lizzie, go ahead and dip this. Now we have a half a cup of shortening. I know this sounds crazy, but it, it's, it's brilliant, I promise. Yeah, it's we brilliant. We have a half a cup of shortening in here that we have melted on top of the stove. You can melt it in the microwave. Now we're going to soak up our, um, and, you know, um, squeeze it so that, so that we don't have too much, but don't squeeze oh. all of it. Okay. See, that's why you do this. Yeah. I don't okay. know the turkey stuff. So we have this <laughs> um, that's totally been drenched in our shortening. And now we're just going to lay it right over the top of the turkey. Okay? It's going to lay it right over the top. This is still double. So we want to cover the whole thing exactly like that. And then we're going to put it into, Lizzie, if you'll bring that over. Your we're roasting pan. going to put it pan. directly into the roasting pan. Just have to get it off. Whoa. And what about my roasting pan that was actually amazing from Costco last year? That was. Wasn't it from Costco? Yes. Yeah, you went and got one really inexpensive. Okay, it was great. So now we have our turkey and we're putting our cheesecloth directly over everything and we'll pat it down, okay? Just like that. And it's going to make the most moist, incredible turkey. When Wait until you, you see it. And it's beautifully brown. Huh? It's beautiful. Pardon me. When did you uh, discover the cloth? Lizzie, we, were, we forgot to stuff I it. I know. That's what I was okay, just Okay, that's funny. Okay, now we'll take this off. <laughs> okay. Do you do it by hand or yeah. a spoon? We were just going to do it. Yes, put it with the spoon. So just begin. Yeah. Are we putting all of it? No. Because this is no. not a big enough turkey, right? No. It's about a half a cup of stuffing per pound, but we're not measuring it. So this is about a 12 pound turkey. It's gonna take with stuffing about three and a half to four hours to cook. Just check um, your turkey, the turkey guideline. When you have a so thing in the turkey, we, the pop, the thermometer, does that help you know when it's done? Yes, it pops up. Doesn't it up. tell you? It definitely pops up. This one has one. This yeah, was a this fresh one has turkey. One. Um, I believe this was the Jenny O. I'm not a pro at the turkey. I let her. So we're not going to like just Push, 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 and stuff, stuff, stuff it all. We're just, we're just literally Popcorn. using our spoon, and we'll get it to the top because it's beautiful. When the top? When it, well, I mean, you know, we want, we want it to show, and show how beautiful it is after oh. it's baked. Okay. Okay, and then I like to put some right here, right here on the legs. Oh, okay. Yeah, just kind of here. 
exactly like that. There, there we go. We're finished. More. Yeah, we're finished. That is how simple and how easy. So we're done. Yum. We're going to put this in the oven at 325. We're going to bake it for about four hours. And do you baste or does the cheesecloth make it so it doesn't have to be basted? That's exactly, it does all the work for you. Does all the work for you. And if we were using butter on, instead of shortening, the butter would burn. And so that's why we're using shortening. And it's going to make this turkey It's a 12 pound so turkey, moist. right, mom? Yes, this one is 12 pounds. And but so- we're usually using a 16 pound. So you don't put a lid over it. Um, now we're gonna cover it with um, tinfoil. That's foil. what she's asking, yes. you put a lid. Now we're going to just put tinfoil on top. Okay. And we're gonna put it in the oven. Now, oh, what was I going to say? Um, that I recipe, that recipe that I just showed you, um, is going to be enough for a 16 pound turkey. Okay, either recipe. So you can either use the traditional and stuff, exactly like what we just did, or the cornbread and stuff, or don't stuff at all and put the cornbread in a pan, just like we did, yeah. put a little bit of spray, dot it with a little bit of butter and bake it, okay? So however you wanna do it. So this is ready to go. So let's let's have, um, so these other herbs are just going to go around the turkey when we um, serve it. Does it, it still get it brown? Beautiful. Yeah, it does. Does the turkey yes. get brown? Yes, wait until you see it. So we'll show you as soon as it comes out of the oven. Believe me, she knows her turkey. <laughs> well, you know your turkey. No, I don't. <laughs> what are you talking about? I just let you do it every year. I know, but last year you did it. <laughs> so, I don't know what you're talking about. No. Okay, so this is ready for the oven now, okay? So we'll put it in. So we're finished. So let's... Okay, um, we have five minutes. Yeah, so we have five minutes to go. What we have, what we'd like to talk about, if there are no other questions because we don't want to take too long. Uh, can um, you use butter flavored shortening? Sure, sure. Oh, yeah. And I I'm got gonna something all hands. over me. I'm going to wash my Okay, hands. really fast. So we're giving a winner every single Friday. So the winner today, um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, until after the holidays, after Christmas, the new year, we are giving a lucky winner every single week. So I'll post a thing on our page on Monday on Instagram. So you need to be following on Instagram, hopefully Facebook. And we're posting the win. So we'll post a post on Monday. We're asking you to try to share it with a friend. Now, if it's just so impossible for you to figure out the technology to put it in a story, we thought it would be fun to share in a story to your friends. But if you feel like you don't even know the technology, just be honest and share with a friend about us, the food nanny, a recipe you love. Just someone um, that you know, your someone neighbor. Someone you know, your just neighbor. Just talk to them. And just say, yeah, yeah, we love them. We love the flour. We love the salt or whatever. And make a comment on the post. And then every Friday on the live, we're going to announce the winner. So the winner today, you announce her, mom, is Desiree Widdick. W-I-T-T-I-G. We hope we're saying your name right. Yes, yes. <laughs> but you are getting to win our French salt, our favorite, favorite French salt, our kamut, our flour that we talk about nonstop, our two, our, 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 our fleur de sel. Our fleur de sel, so this is the finer salt. salt. Our favorite spoon in the entire world. It's a four-in-one food nanny spoon. They're $3. You can add these for nothing on your order. It's a tablespoon, a teaspoon. It's all you'll ever And then use. you'll flip it over. It's a half and a fourth. It's all you'll grab. It's amazing. And then these incredible hot, hot pads. pads. And we don't even make a dollar on these hot pads. And I tell you that because they are a little bit on the pricier side, but they're really not. If you go and invest at Williams Sonoma or Sir Top or anywhere, Anthropology for hot pads, they are expensive. Yes, they are. And my husband's grandma knits these. It takes her three hours to, to knit one. one. And so we give her $10 and um, anyways, she's incredible. And it's a dying art. Yes, it's a dying it is. art. But I want to tell you again why I love the hot pads because it's a number one question. 
Number one is that you can fold them beyond easy when you're trying to grab anything out of the oven. They fold incredibly. It's the perfect weight. <clears throat> yeah. The perfect the weight. The perfect weight. And you never get burned. Never. You never, it, it's crazy because they're not super thick. That's, that's why they're so easy it's to the fold. the perfect weight and perfect size. <clears throat> and they never burn you. They wash amazing. You can bleach them. They're incredible. And she just deserves it. She is the cutest. I, I'll never forget the cute girl at uh, Swiss Day. She said, I'm buying these because of Grammy. She's like, poor Henrietta. Grammy. Henrietta. It's Henrietta. And she watches. She we loves love when you guys say how much you love we the hot love pads. Her. I love the hot pads. I just bought a second set last week. Yeah. Aren't they the best? They're, They're the, the best. best. So anyways, the Kamut is incredible. This is our all-purpose Kamut that literally you are dumping out whatever you're using today and you're using our Kamut. It's life-changing. It's amazing. And I love our Fanny that wrote to us that said she's using all of her old all-purpose normal white flour to make play-doh yes <laughs> oh yeah that was amazing she's like uh she's like i'm using my white flour whatever for play-doh now for the kids so the commute is amazing i feel like we're a full-time shop i think we're gonna need to open up a shop someday but if you want to come to midway you can come to me if you want to go to woodland or if you want to go to highland you can pick up a 25 pound bag until we're close to getting the shipping but anyways our products are life changing and that is what makes your recipe so much even more better like look how i spilled all over me like um our cornbread stuffing our bread everything our desserts everything tastes so much better and before we started the instagram there would be people that would ask us what tastes so different about your bread or your cookies and we said ddd this and this. <laughs> so that's why we created it and we're starting to sell it because yeah. it's gonna change your life and it's so good for you. The Kamut on the back, this is the bread recipe that she was talking about that she used for the stuffing. Yes. We eat this bread every single day. Can't live day. without it. Like cannot live without it. It's so incredible. So you can get the recipe at thefoodnanny.com as well. But the three things the flour is known for really fast is taste, digestibility and, and texture. texture and it you really are going to notice the difference on all of those things so desiree we hope we're saying your name yes. right yes so fun just like our friend desiree you won all of our products for this week so don't be sad next week you can get another chance you're and randomly we're doing chosen this. we just have a round there's a random way to do it there's a random Lindsay's way husband does it for us and you're just random. And don't chosen. worry, wait till our aprons then come out. And um, we have a special food nanny color that we're gonna be talking yeah, about. Yeah, we're so working on that. We're working on that, so it's gonna be super fun. Okay, a couple more questions and then I have I have to go. Okay, when will you have the new cheaper shipping? Um, we're trying, we're In trying. The next, we're hoping at least by the first of the year. Yeah. That's what we're hoping for. Things take a minute to get going. That so, one stopped. Um, yeah, that one. There, there we're back. Sorry, yeah. we're back. Yeah. Uh, so we don't ship the 25 pound bag yet, but yes, you can order the five pound bag. You can fit two in a 13 flat rate box. I would try to put in your orders if you want to try the Kamut before Thanksgiving. Um, it takes about two to three business days we've seen to get to you. So order. Um, does the pie crust texture change with my Kamut? The pie crust? Uh -huh. Not really, not really. It's basically the same. We're showing pies on Tuesday. Um, I, we're, di we're deciding pies are our mashed potatoes because our mashed potatoes are dreamy. And so um, we're trying to figure out. So let us know which one you'd like to see. Either uh, pie dough or mashed or, or our mashed potatoes. Yeah, so we'll do that. Um, yes, Highland has everything. So she has 25 pound bags too. She's a full-time shop, our poor sister-in-law. Yes, uh, we love her. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, a 25 pound bag is $35.95. So it's the same price if you buy two for, if, if you were buying like a 50 originally, it's if you buy two, you can get that same price. Okay, um... Da, 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 sorry, is it whole grain Kamut flour? No, this is the all-purpose white. 
This is the all-purpose white, and the reason why we're... We white have, wheat. It's Yes, it's white wheat. We do have the grain, if you want that, in 50-pound bags, and you can grind your own, and then it's whole. But the white wheat we have found um, works on hundreds of people who are gluten-free. They can tolerate it because Kamut flour has less gluten than any other flour anyway, and so the white you can use in every recipe, every cookie, every cake, every pie, every single thing you make. It makes um, it so incredible. And it makes, it just ups the, the texture, the taste, the okay, digestibility. I really have to go. We just okay. made your Kamut bread and my husband said you better buy some more of that quick. So yummy. Okay, good. If you want, you just need to DM me for information. I don't want to give out. Yeah. Um, People are saying both, both, mashed potatoes, pie. Okay, maybe both. I don't Everybody? have a roasting rack. Is it okay. critical? Um, I got to go. A roasting rack for the turkey? Yes. Um, yes, it is critical. You do I need a roasting I have a preschool I, conference. <laughs> so she's got to go. But um, I'm not. So say goodbye. Um, say okay, everybody, keep cooking. Your family's worth it. I it's, had to end it on this one. Okay. And is that Facebook? Yes. Okay. Keep cooking, everybody. Your family's Hit birthday. Hit mom and then keep, keep absolutely um, <laughs> doing our meal plan. We'll get back to you later. Everybody have the Love best weekend. Love you guys. Weekend. Have the best weekend. Oh, okay. and something else so incredibly fun. We're on a billboard oh, in, yes. on I-15 in Salt Lake City. We're going to go do stories. Thanks, Horse and Gigi. Thanks, Horse and Gigi. We're on a billboard. It's Thank so you. fun. It is so fun. So we got to go. But we love you. Keep cooking. <laughs>